I went and saw the movie Dunkirk and I absolutely loved it. It's one of like the most relentless, most intense movies I've ever sat through and I, I want to say it's one of my new favorite movies of all time but I I think I'm gonna try to go see it again before I, I make a distinction like that. I need to see it more than once I feel like but it was really 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 good and I loved everything about it. Really, I loved everything. I went and saw it in this IMAX theater that I've been, I've gone to a couple times recently. I went and saw Wonder Woman there and Spider-Man Homecoming and it's, a, it's an amazing experience. It's IMAX. It's a huge, huge, huge screen I think as you saw and uh, under all of the seats are subwoofers so you like, you, every single person in the audience can like feel the, the sound. They can feel themselves in the movie and I think that really helped the experience a lot and I honestly I love that experience it's one of the best like movie going experiences I've ever had and I just I kind of never want to watch movies any other way ever again but I really really enjoyed it a lot I will be genuinely surprised like genuinely really surprised if that movie does not get nominated for at least uh, at the Oscars for at least like at least nominated for director best director best picture best cinematography best music, best sound editing, and sound mixing. It's just, it's really good. I'm, I'm hoping that it wins a couple of those things, but I'm at least hoping that it gets nominated for all of them because it deserves it. Uh, some of the, like, the criticisms that I saw about it, I didn't really, it didn't really make any sense to me. Like, they didn't, people didn't feel like an emotional connection to the character because there's very minimal dialogue. They didn't feel the emotionality of it, and uh, they felt like disconnected or something, which I totally, totally disagree with. And I'm not sure how much the experience of going to see it at the theater was involved in that, but I just, I loved how little dialogue there was. I loved, I just, I, I felt like I was in, in it with the characters. I felt a ton of stuff for the characters. I mean, I felt like I was there with them. I felt, you know, it, it feels like you never know what's going to happen next. You feel like you don't know if you're going to get shot at at any moment or if a bomb's going to fall at any moment or planes are going to fly over you and drop bombs on you at any moment and it's like it's just relentless and doesn't stop and you never know what the next thing that's going to happen is and you never know where it's going to come from and you feel that right there along with the characters and i feel like that's a really organic way of showing this kind of like war movie situation and i just really love it a lot i don't understand some of the crit criticisms like that i've seen about it and i'm just so glad that this didn't succumb to just this stupid dialogue that is completely unnecessary and out of place and I mean you really need two characters crying and telling each other the things they're feeling back and forth like you don't need that in this movie you can see it you can literally see what they're feeling at any given moment but anyway I love the movie if it's still out in theaters by the time you see this vlog uh, I'll have probably seen it a second time and I really hope that you'll we'll have a chance to go see it at, at the biggest on the biggest screen you possibly can because uh, it's a great experience but one of the, the main reason I put this camera right here is because I've had issues with my glasses recently. You can kind of see there's tape holding it together like it's it's broken off. This one, it's like it's also very loose and this lens keeps popping out like every time I try to clean it and I get really sick and tired of them. So a couple weeks ago I went and got my eyes checked to see if my prescription changed and then I went to order glasses online and I, I did order some originally. It's just... I, Looking at glasses online, there's a lot of glasses you can choose from. There's a lot of glasses, like sites you can choose from that sell glasses for not as, as expensive as it would be to buy them, like in a in a store in person. And uh, just uh, they all begin to look exactly the same. The more and more you look through them, it's really like disheartening to look through page after page after page of glasses at all these different sites, and they all look exactly the same. And they're so boring. And I just wanted something more interesting, something more unique than just plain old glasses, just because I felt so bored of them and I felt really annoyed looking at all of these pages of pages of glasses that I just felt all looked exactly the same. So I was telling Giselle that and I, I sent her like a list of a bunch of ones that I thought were at least somewhat unique and interesting. And uh, I went with, originally I went with the weirdest ones I could possibly find and I got them to see what they would look like on me and I returned them because I didn't like them very much. They were from a really great site called iBuyDirect. They, they got here super, super fast. It was a great site. They're really great quality, but I did not like the way they looked on me at all. They were just, they did not suit me. I thought they were cool. Like, I like the idea of them, but I did, they did not look good on me at all. So instead, I bought a different pair of glasses from a different place. And these are the ones I'm, I'm gonna keep them. 
Uh, I don't know if Giselle will like them or not. She hasn't seen them on me. She knows what they look like because I sent her a picture of them. But uh, she hasn't seen me in them yet. And uh, hopefully she doesn't hate them. I, I think they're going to take a long time to get used to on me for sure. Uh, I really like them. I really like them. I really like the way they look. And But I don't know exactly how I feel about the way they look on me yet. Uh, we'll see how they grow on me. But I'm, I'm going to keep them and wear them. So hopefully they do grow on me quick enough. Here they are. This is from uh, GlobalEyeglasses.com which I would, in my opinion, you should go with like I buy direct or uh, $39glasses.com over this place because they took this place took a really long time to get these to me, like uh, almost a month. Whereas the first place that I ordered from it only took it literally took a week from the day that I ordered them for them to get to me. Uh, so I I would I don't know they, they have some interesting glasses on Global Eye Glasses uh, and I don't I buy direct as well so. Uh, I, I, those are the two sides that I was choosing between, but Global Eye Glasses, they sent me a cleaning cloth. And here are the glasses. They're, they are pretty, like, thick. Uh, I can't tell if this is in focus at the moment because I can't, everything is blurry to me, every single thing is blurry to me at the moment. But I really like, it has, like, this wood, uh, thing on the side, like, these little silver pieces, uh, that I really like. And the black back here, and just, I really like the way they look a lot. But, uh, let's see how they look on me. There you go. That's those are my new glasses. They're very big. They're a little bit bigger than I realized they were. They're a little bit thicker than I realized they were. Uh, but that's okay. I'm I yeah, I look like a complete nerd now, even more than I did before. Uh, but I like the way they look. I like them a lot, and I hope that I will. They will grow on me more and more as time goes on. Because when I first put them on, I was like, uh, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not sure. They're really big, they're thicker than I thought, they're, I don't know, they're a lot different than my other glasses, but, you know, I'm gonna, I like them, so I'm gonna give them a shot, and keep wearing them, and yeah, so, those are my new glasses. And here's Giselle. I can't believe you showed the vlog before you showed me. <laughs> I was waiting for you. Whoa! <laughs> this is my first time seeing them head on. What do you think? They're so big. I know, they're bigger and thicker than I thought they would be, like I was just saying a second ago. But they're, uh... It's really interesting. They're, like, silver and wooden and yeah, I really, black. I know, and... I really like all the different pieces to it. Uh, they're definitely going to take some getting used to a lot. But they're definitely a little bit strange, I think. But yeah, I really I mean, like them. They're better than the other ones. I agree, very much so. The other ones that he tried to order and were really 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 weird i yeah i don't know if i like i don't like the silver part in the middle it makes you look like harry potter with his broken glasses <laughs> but besides that i like them i think well <laughs> they're just very different that's for sure i've had some fun stuff going on the past actually a little while um i've had like pain flossing in these teeth up here for the past a little while went into the dentist about a week ago and had the worst dentist experience of my life with like really just like rude people who were not helpful at all and who I really really hated and they cleaned my teeth and I was like spitting out mouthfuls of blood and was just like traumatizing and I don't mind the dentist I've never been one to hate the dentist and so called a different dentist and then they're like oh yeah we can set stuff up for you plus I've just been having like worse and worse tooth pain over here it started with like flossing and flossing still hurts but it's just like been tooth pain and I started getting like really bad toothaches right before going into the dentist the first time and after I went into the dentist my whole like jaw has been aching my teeth up here and all the way around on the bottom started hurting as well and it was just like not fun and so I called a different dentist and they're like oh yeah you can come in in like three weeks and I was like Excuse you. Well, the other dentist first, we should say, told her that she needed to have a certain something done, and that it, it would it was an emergency really. But this these other dentists were like, oh, you can you can come in on the seventeenth, like uh, like three weeks later. Yeah. Um. And so instead, I went into a different dentist today. I called them yesterday, and they're like, Yeah, can you come in tomorrow afternoon? And I was like, Yes, I can. I will make it happen. So I took off an hour early from work so I could go in. And I started getting a root canal done on my tooth, which is really fun. I don't know if you'd be able to see it, but like they've shaved away like half my tooth inside. It's really fun. So 
that's what I did today. And a couple days ago, I told Christopher that I was going to do something. And he said, okay. And then I think he forgot about it, potentially. So I bought myself another copy of Animal I Crossing. I did forget you were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I... This is a welcome amiibo version. You can like update, so Animal Crossing did this huge update for their 3DS game like six months ago or eight months ago. It's, it was a while ago now. It might have even been like a year ago. It was completely free update, but they did like print new car cartridges, which was really nice. And they're like half the price of the game was originally the half the price that I like paid for the game when I first bought it like four years ago when it was brand new. So. It is the new version, but it really doesn't make a difference. But something with this is that you can, like, you, with this update, is you can, like, use Animal Crossing amiibo cards to, like, get special items in the game. So I bought some amiibo cards as well, babe. <laughs> and this is the first time Chris is seeing these. Lovely. So we're going to open it right now and see what cards we got. Well, she got this new thing because you can only make one town in what in the cartridge uh, so she wants to make another town and start from the beginning but have you, like a you different can have town. four characters but it's a different ca but it's the same town and it's the same characters and stuff and i want a different layout different characters because in my first game of animal crossing i was very conscientious of making my town look exactly the way i want it to work and look and so i didn't really ever do any like community projects and stuff like that which is kind of a big part of that game that I never really got into so for this game I want to be a lot more relaxed and just like mess around a lot more but without deleting her other, other town yeah because I still love that town I still love the characters in it tooth pain so fun so this is kind of my I'm getting a root canal baby let me have this fun game yeah and the root canal is like it's it's gonna last for the last next few weeks. Like this was just the first. This is just, today was just the first part of it. There's gonna be several more uh, things to go into for her. Yeah, so. I'm gonna be going back to the dentist for probably over a month, getting like checkups and stuff. So we've opened it. There's gonna be six cards inside. Let's see what we get. Oh, it's inside a pack. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was anticlimactic. <laughs> but she has to take these like antibiotic pills and stuff. Yeah. Fun stuff. For the next. For the next about a week as well yeah. so it's every eight hours so i'm gonna take my first one tonight at 11 then i'm gonna do 11 7 3 for the next week and i had to do it as late as 11 even though i've been going to bed around 9 30 recently because i've just been really tired because i'm gonna have to do 11 because this is before we, we are going to new york yeah so, our, our new york trip is this weekend so. yeah so that's fun and i'm gonna have half a tooth less for our trip but that's a different story. Oh, there's a there's a tear thing up here. Okay, let's see what cards we get. Okay. I think this is the way that's the back. Yeah, okay. So these are the backs of the cards. So fancy. Fun stuff. We got Keaton, Bud, Bianca, Rodney, <laughs> Tipper, <laughs> it's a cow yeah. named Tipper, and Katie. Katie's that one the, is holographic. Yeah, it's the special card, the SP card, because it's like it's a it's a set character, so gotcha. you can get a different assortment of character characters in each town. I'm like lisping because of this because I don't want to like clench my teeth together because it's painful. But then there's like a set characters, so like set characters in your town who like run the businesses, yeah. and who are special events characters that come and visit you like once a year and stuff like that. And she's a set character who comes. Whenever you've been traveling to other characters' towns, like ever play other other players' towns, so like if I if my character was to go to Christopher's town, then she would show up in the next week or something and be like, "Hey, take me to his town, please." So she's like a special character, but I don't know any of these characters. I've and had, this one's hideous. So I've had can, I've had Bianca before. Have you? Yeah. She's all right. That one is a little bit hideous. I don't really like Bud either. I like the uh, the bird. Keaton. You can have Keaton. Yeah, I like him. He's fun. Alright, so that means I will be playing probably on our trip and stuff like that. So I'm very excited. And it's like a fresh start, which will be fun. And I think I'm going to try to do... I've already tried to do it on my other one, but I think I am going to try to like 100% collect every single item that I can in this version and really keep track yeah. of it. Good luck. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs>
So real quick before we go ahead and end this vlog, I have a few things I wanted to show you. Uh, I haven't really been requesting books from publishers at all because I haven't been reading them or reviewing them on my booktube channel, so it wouldn't really make any sense for them to send me stuff uh, for, or for me to request stuff because I know that I wouldn't be able to uh, re uh, review it because I just don't feel like it right now. Which I'm going to talk a little bit more about very soon, kind of what I've been up to other than reading and reviewing because there has been a pretty decent amount of stuff uh, that I've been up to that I want to share with you. But I'll wait until I can just talk for a little bit longer about it. Uh, but I do have a few things that publishers just sent me because of whatever. I mean, there's it's been uh, a couple months since I posted anything, but over those past few months, uh, I have gotten these three things. So I'm going to open them real quick. The first one, I believe, is from Tor, although I'm not 100% certain. Uh, it seems to be from, like, Macmillan, at the, at the very least. And it is Tor. I don't know what it is. It's called Killing Is My Business by Adam Christopher, and this comes out, it already came out, came out on July 25th. This is a sequel to uh, another book, it's a standalone sequel, so you can, you don't have to read them in order apparently, but this, the first one was called Made to Kill, a uh, blending of noir detective stories and science fiction, featuring a ro robot gumshoe and his brassy supercomputer boss. Sounds interesting. Has a quote from, a uh, blurb from John Scalzi right there at the very top. I don't know uh, if, if or when I'll get to this, but I do thank Tor for uh, sending it my way. Because honestly, it does sound like a blend of the things that I really enjoy. Uh, and then the next two, uh, I believe, are both from Simon & Schuster. So uh, probably some sort of gallery imprint or something. This package doesn't really have a specific place to open it at. So I'm just kind of tearing the cardboard up as much as I can to get at the thing inside. It is, ooh, looks like it's a collection of short stories or novellas. So it's uh, stories from the villains of your favorite urban fantasy series. It's called Urban Enemies. There's a story from Jim Butcher in here. Uh, Kevin Hearn, Shauna McGuire. Yeah, sounds cool. I, I mean, I like those authors and have read their work. Uh, I haven't heard of this. Uh, I'm not sure when it comes out. That would be August 1st, apparently. Uh, it's just, like it says on the, the front here, it says stories from uh, the villains of your favorite urban fantasy series. So I, I don't know which, I'm guessing Jim Butcher's Dresden Files has a story in here. And uh, the, the Jim Butcher one is called Even Hand, which is a Dresden Files short, like I said. And it's the very first story in here. Uh, there's Kelly Armstrong, Jeff Summers, Craig Schaefer, uh, there's one here from Kevin Hurd called The Naughtiest Cherub. Guessing that's from uh, the Iron Druid series, so actually I might have to dive into this. I might read that uh, that Jim Butcher story pretty soon here. I'm not gonna lie, because I only have one more Dresden Files book left. I do have other short stories that have been written. Uh, I haven't read any of those. That, like Changes is a collection, I believe, of those, and I haven't read them any of them yet. Uh, I'll probably listen to those, but I might go ahead and read that at some point very soon, because, like I said, I'm trying to hold off on listening to the last Dresden Files book that I had to listen to before I have to wait like everybody else. And then one more. That's very satisfying. A lot easier than the other one. Ooh, this thing is huge. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's gorgeous. Look at that cover. So it's called Alone. I'm guessing it's uh, Sh Shabute. Shabute? I don't know. I've never heard of this before. I've uh, never seen any of this stuff before. This is from Gallery 13. This is the same place that sent me that book, Roughneck, uh, which I read and thought was okay. I never actually ended up doing a full review on it, even though I wanted to. Uh, just kind of, that's like right when I started getting into a slump. I liked it well enough. The graphic novel aspects of it, the illustrations were beautiful, uh, and just, it was really unique in its illustration as well. Uh, the colors and the compositions and uh, just the, how they told the story through pictures was really unique and interesting, but the story itself was pretty whatever. Like, it didn't really catch me at all uh, very much. It was very quick and kind of over quickly. It mostly just felt like a short story that I feel, had it been a bit longer, could have at least given some more emotional connection to the characters. But this looks... this is thick. This is a nice, thick uh, graphic novel book. And uh, uh, the drawings inside look really nice. It's all black and white. Uh, I love this cover. I love that. That's gorgeous. 
absolutely gorgeous. So, so this uh, apparently uh, Shabute. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look up how to say that. I'm not gonna do it right the second. Uh, but I will, I'm actually very interested in diving into this and because it's I mean it's graphic novel, so I could get through it. It won't take me very long to get through it probably, and uh, it looks enjoyable. Uh, it's uh, that is this the, the name the guy goes by. I don't you might have heard of him. I've never heard of it before. So this actually came out in July, July 11th. I honestly don't remember how long I've had these sitting here. I've been waiting until I got a couple more. Like I've been waiting to open them for you until I got this new camera. Until we started using the new camera, and then by the time I had three, I was like, you know what, I I should just go ahead and open all these uh, at some point very soon. So I decided to do that now. Uh, best-selling graphic novel by master illustrator storyteller Chabouté, chosen as an official selection at France's prestigious uh, Angoulême International Comics Festival. Butchering the French stuff here. Uh, it's regarded as the author's masterpiece, an unforgettable tale told through stunning black and white visuals, intertwining tenderness, despair, and humor in the human condition. On a tiny lighthouse island, far from the rest of the world, a lonely hermit lives out his existence. Every week, a supply boat leaves provisions, its occupants never meeting him, never asking the obvious questions. Who are you? Why do you hide? Why do you never leave? What is it like to be so alone? Years spent on a desert, deserted rock, a lifetime really, with imagination his sole companion, has made the lighthouse keep... Something more than alone, something else entirely. For him, what lies beyond the horizon might be nothing, and so why not stay put? And then it kind of goes into a but one day kind of thing. I'm not gonna, I might keep that uh, as a mystery for myself. But this is new from Gallery 13, uh, just came out in July, so if uh, you're interested, you should go check it out. It's really pretty. So that's about it for this vlog. Uh, we will see you guys. Uh, next time on our way to New York City. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you then.